Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. This is a news article, of course, that came out earlier today, I've only just noticed. So, should we go through it together? It's all about rush hour and creating immersion. So let's go through it. Rush hour, which is Train Civil 2's upcoming DLC. So just as a reminder on that DLC, well, Train Sim World 2 is going through a free update. This is coming out this summer, August. Well, we don't know the date, August, September, possibly. There is a free update which will give us uh, the next version of Unreal Engine um, that they have access to with optimization for Xbox Series X and S and also PlayStation 5. So that is the bit that's going to happen, you know, better frame rate, all of that stuff. But at the same time, Rush Hour is the DLC that's going to be priced, I don't know, 25 quid, possibly $30 euros. Not sure. Well, I think, no, I don't know if there is an official thing. But anyway, that's what I'm thinking. That is going to come with three new routes. Remember, we've got the Washington, we've got the Dresden, and we've got the Gatwick. So London to Brighton Mainline. So we've got those three routes that are coming as a separate DLC, but we still all get the free update to Train Sim World 2, the newest version this summer. Anyway, let's get to it. So this is all about immersion. So as you can see, alongside the release of Rush Hour, we are working on an update to Train Sim World 2 that will be released for all players. You get it free. Rush Hour, pay for. Train Sim World 2 update, free. So part of those improvements is the immersion experience. So we're going to sit down with Matt Pedals today. Hey, Matt. Hey, you all right? No, no, I'm joking. Find out more about this and what you can look forward to this summer. Hey, if we get to uh, do an interview with Matt, that would be quite cool. Um, or even just a chat with him. That would be quite nice. Hey, Dovetail, if you want me to come back down, I'll come back down and say hello. Anyway, what does immersion mean for Trains in World 2? So in Trains in World 2, they brought a significant amount of immersion improvements aim to improve features and functions that take you out of the experience of driving a train and make you feel like you are driving a game. Okay? Am I saying that right? We aim to improve fe features and functions that take you out of the experience of driving a train and make you feel like you are driving a game. Okay, I thought we we're trying to make it like we are driving a train anyway things such as pop-up menu oh, okay things such as pop-up menus give you a lot of power and flexibility on the controller but they're completely immersion breaking breaking and trying to work how work out how we can arrange other menus such as the pause screen has been a key focus for dtg they want to help us work out what information they need right now without having to go hunting for it now that range of improvements last year has been very popular but they've received a lot of really good feedback that they have listened to and will try and use that to improve further. So what have they changed for immersion? Well, the first thing, control improvements. Okay, I was going to panic there. Before anyone panics, we have not touched everything that you know already and love about the immersion controls. Good. Because man, when I go back to Train Sim World 1 or Train Sim World 2020, oh, I can't remember the controls. Anyway, we aren't changing anything you already know how to use and if you don't want to learn how to use the new functions it won't change the way you play so what they have done is add shift keys well there's not a shift key on my controller without changing the functionality that's already there this gives us a new two new functions operation shift and camera shift okay so not a shift key on a button anyway operation shift which is on the xbox controller is when you hold down the x key that's the square key on the playstation and when that button is pressed down, other buttons on the controller now do different things. You can operate AFB, issue a PZB release, PZB override. Yeah, you need the keyboard for that. You can do sanding. You can access the second horn. Yes, everyone, that's the biggest news. Console users, you don't need a keyboard to get the second horn. Yes, you can now access both the high and low tone. So just having a look here 
Um, so as you can see, switch break and hold will do the operations shift. And then that's where we have all those additional buttons. So looking forward to seeing exactly what they're going to, well, we kind of know what they are, but I want to have a go on them. So camera shift works when you hold down the right joystick. You can now zoom from any camera viewing using the left joystick to move in and out. So we've got zoom on console now, instead of, um, you know, on PC, you've got the scroll, um, but you know, to be able to zoom, you can now do it on console or will be. That works in all of the external cameras. You've got the ability to cycle all of the internal cab cameras, nice, and all of the external cameras. Well, we missed that. Trains and World had that. Trains and World 1, we did have all cameras. So you no longer need a keyboard. So one, two, three, eight. Uh, you have the ability to cycle all the, no, we did that. Yeah, we all the internal cab cameras and all the external cameras. You no longer need a keyboard to get to the static camera, number eight. You can now watch the trains go by. So we will have static camera back on console that's good that's good so this means you spend less time thinking about how to do certain things and which button you need to be pressing and you gain muscle memory and just do them without thinking yeah definitely that would be really cool to use on the controller so even though you're in a living room or bedroom or your own space you're looking at a screen you will naturally become immersed in what you are doing difficulty getting information and difficulty gaining access to the information you want all remind you that you are stepped out and playing a game by making these parts of the experience intuitive natural and easy to access you will feel much more immersed giving you the freedom to focus on looking out of the window of the train i don't even have a window of a train here i'm just looking to my right and i can see my bookcase anyway <laughs> what you were doing instead of focus on what button you need to be pressing next nice Excellent. So, ah, there's the zoom in and out. There's the zoom in and out that we're seeing there. As well as the controller, the pause screen has had a lot of work too. This is to help players at various levels get the information they require. So, the overview tab has a gradient profile of the track ahead, showing you where tunnels are and showing where the gradients are. So, that's kind of what we get in Train Simulator, but it's in the pause section. It's a slightly exaggerated gradient profile, so you can clearly see those gradients instead of it being largely flat with you know subtle variations. You know, we're all not we're not on LGV Mediterranean every time, you know, where there is a big difference. You can now see the gradient profiles coming up from about 10 kilometers away. Okay, and see where your next objective is. Above that, you'll have the speed graph telling you all the upcoming speed limits for the next 10 kilometers. Nice. Why are you saying 10 kilometers? kilometers you should do it in miles anyway the idea is that these two graphs vertically align with each other and also look kilometers that's spelt wrong i thought dtg were a, a british company an english company that's not how you spell kilometers and that's why i'm saying kilometers because it just doesn't look like kilometers <laughs> something which have been art which has been asked for is more visibility ahead of the line letting you know what the upcoming speed limits are yeah that would be good rather than put it on the screen all the time which is easy in terms of playing the game what we want is for users to push the pause button see your gradient profiles upcoming speed restrictions remind yourself where you are and what's coming up unpause the game and you're now back in and immersed you still have the hud on the bottom right corner telling you what's going on right now and anytime you need the information again pause the game okay so are they effectively removing the little bit on the top right of our screens so, okay, yep. Yeah. There's the six kilometers, possibly. Let's have a look. There's the, uh... yeah, there's the, oh. Ah, there's the speed there. There's the speed there. Okay. There's the gradients. Nice. Love it. Love it. But that does potentially mean that we do, either we lose out the top right, or we can still get it, but we can remove it and not worry. So why did you decide to put this information in the pause menu? If we put too much information on the screen, and they're already cl very close to that now, very nearly at the point where you could put the blinds down on the train and not see out of the window and still complete the objectives because there is so much information already on the screen. They didn't want to add to that with the pause screen allow showing the upcoming speed limits. You could re you remove some information off the run screen now if you felt like it. You could take some of that information away. The more bits of the HUD you're able to take away, the more immersed you become. You'll feel more like a train driver as opposed to a game player. That did not sound like a 
train horn that sounded like a lorry a truck this will also help users transition into more challenging gameplay should they want to it will give players the option of learning the routes in a more realistic way because you will see the patterns of where the speed limits are and where they relate to the gradients understanding that speed limit goes up when a gradient goes down and when you feel the train go down you'll learn that it's time that you can speed up you then begin to build route knowledge because you can then visually see what's going on on the pause screen as well as the overview tab they've added a control guide more variations on the control now thanks to the shift buttons so there's a bit more complexity there for new players finding out what a specific button does was awkward to find out before but now it's just a couple of clicks away to go and find out that's good that we we get to see that and i think that's what this was you know here control guide seeing exactly what we need to press love it um we've also added a hud guide explain broadly what the various areas of the hud refer to trying to give more information for new and returning players about some of those more basic functions and it's also a good reminder particularly as we add new functions for everyone to learn okay so what is track ir how has it been implemented so track ir is three infrared lights that attach to your headsets with an infrared webcam that looks for the patterns of these lights what it does is use these patterns to work out where your head is at all times they have added new track ir into the game and this implementation means that your viewpoint in the game follows where your head is if you don't know what track IR, you're probably thinking, if I turn my head left, I'm no longer looking at the screen, and that's no good. No. What track IR does is magnify the response in the game, so you only have to move your head slightly to get the large rotation in the game. So it's not VR, where you do move it, it's IR. It doesn't mean you have to keep your head perfectly still the whole game, you just need to make a conscious decision to get it to move. This isn't something for everybody, but you do get used to it. Most people who use track IR however do fall in love with it i believe track ir is just for pc though just to say that okay you have made some accessibility improvements what's been updated well since the last year's changes is that some elements of the hub were too small like distance to the next objective and the times in the corner we've increased the size of those to make them more clear and more visible yeah because people said that the hub was bigger but why wasn't the bits on the top right and left anyway that's good the cursor in the center of the screen now goes away when you're not moving the camera. Oh, this is something that can be toggled to off. The default will be on as you don't really need the dot when you aren't moving. That is good because when you're on a console, you have to press control or PC, control A to remove the dot. So that's nice that when you've stopped moving, it will remove. I like that. We can now cycle how bright the center is for the console users. For users who are hard of sight, this was something that we used to have to set to full brightness. And for Train Simulator 2, we changed it to half brightness to get it out of the way a bit. What this has done is make the game harder to play for people who have sight difficulties. So that was the wrong move. Okay. So again, Control 8 was half full and nothing. So maybe that's why people that needed that with sight difficulties, they didn't have a camera, uh, a camera, a keyboard to sort that out. But we have changed it so users can select what brightness they want now. The default will remain at half brightness for those who don't want to change it. We're also made aware that the dot can still be a bit on the small side if your eyesight is particularly bad. We've created a new cursor for the middle that looks like a big donut. This is known as the large cursor and it will disappear after a prolonged period where the camera isn't moving. Oh, look! How cool is that? That's nice. I like that. These changes were directly made because of players explaining the challenges they face whilst playing. We really want the community to continue sharing feedback if they experience accessibility issues so we can improve, continue to improve and make further changes that allow everyone to join our game. Join Matt, Sam and JD this Thursday. They will be showing off some of the features covered in this article. There is also an announcement, but it is possibly not an announcement with regards to rush hour. It could be that the announcement on Thursday is just going through what this is mentioning. Okay, I have not heard anything. You have not heard anything. Let's not make things up and go, oh, it's going to be this. And oh, it's no, we don't know. We don't know what's happening. So we are going to keep it that the announcement this Thursday, this is what's going to be in my head. This announcement this Thursday is just to show what we've just seen now. That's all we're going to see. If there is one more thing, amazing, but that is my lowest expectation is we're just going to find out all about the immersion. That's the announcement, yeah? That's possibly why we've got this news article, because there have been so many people just going, oh, 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 no. 
stick with this yeah cool so train sim world rush hour remember train sim world 2 is getting an update in the summer which is free for all players everyone will get it with all the new features of um oh what do you call it of xbox you know opt and playstation 5 optimization all the immersion stuff that we've been talking about the passenger things are going to change soon but remember rush hour is the dlc which includes these three routes which will get the new passengers and then they will gradually backdate all the previous ones hopefully with the new passengers um but yeah rush hour bit is the dlc which is paid for but train simulator 2 is still getting an update View it for you old old people, you know, old people, old uh, Train Sim World gamers, drivers. Remember when we went from Train Sim World to Train Sim World 2020, we had the free update, but it didn't come with those routes that came with it. Same here. Train Sim World 2 is getting an update. Rush Hour bit is the DLC for the new routes. Thank you very much for watching. That was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I was telling everyone, oh, I'm going to be 10 minutes and we're already 16 minutes. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed reading through the um, news article with me. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Social media links are in the description below. I will see you on the next video. This is Mega Sim out of here. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye.